Hey everyone, Mr. MC here. This is a guide for round 4 of the 2021 FIA Nations Cup season taking place at Suzuka Circuit with the Group 3 cars. For this guide, when you're starting a new lap, make sure you bring yourself to the left so you can have a bit more track distance to build up a bit more speed. And we're also using the Nissan GTR since it's a really good power car over here at Suzuka. Brake balance is at plus 5. Your first braking point is this path that is on the left and you want to use a lot of braking control so you can slow down while still having the ability to turn. Just be nice and careful on your brakes and your turn in and once you're starting to go towards the apex of the second turn that is where you can start to carefully accelerate. The S is all about throttle control but you do want to use a little bit of braking in the GTR since this car is a bit understeery. So you can see me use a little bit of braking to set myself up for the next couple of turns. Use a little bit of braking through here as well. This will be applicable for most if not all cars. Bring yourself towards the right and do a little bit of throttle control. Try to be right on the apex so you can take the second half of the turn flat out. Bring yourself towards the left, and your next breaking point, especially for the GTR, is this digital flag that is on the left. Quick burst of braking, then bring yourself towards the left, brake before the curb on the left ends, brake hard for a short moment, and quickly ease off of the brakes. Carefully get on the throttle, and as you make this right turn, you want to bring yourself towards the right, and brake just before the curb on the right ends. So this is exactly where I start to brake. Brake hard for a short while, and you want to carefully ease off of the brakes as you turn in. Once you get close to the apex, be completely off of the brakes and the car will rotate more. Carefully get on the throttle, and once the car is pointing where you want to go, that is where you start to fully accelerate. You can stay towards the right side of the track, look for a path that is on the right as that is your next braking point. So brake just before you pass it, brake hard for a short moment, carefully ease off of the brakes and bring yourself towards the right as you want to brake before the curb on the right ends. Lots of braking control here, you want to slow down while still have the ability to turn and carefully get on the throttle once again. Then take your time, bringing yourself towards the right side of the track and for this upcoming left turn, you want to turn in at the 50 meter board. So right around here, this is where you start to turn in. Quick lift off of a throttle. Don't touch the green stuff on the right. Bring yourself towards the left and break in between the 150 and the 100 meter boards. Break hard for a short while. Ease off of the brakes as you turn in, taking advantage of the red and white curves. And for this final part, you can actually take advantage of the tealish area as that is still considered to be on track limits. So carefully accelerate through there, lots of throttle control, and if you have a good lap time coming in, bring yourself all the way to the right. If not, stay towards the left. But that's all for the lap guy, let's go ahead and take a look at the strategies. For the qualifying session, you'll only have 5 minutes to try to get a good qualifying time, so you'll have 2 chances to try to get a good qualifying time. And once you start your outlap, you want to be a little easy on the car because you don't want to start to bring too much tire wear into your tires, so just be a little easy on your car as you're doing your outlap. Substream can be useful, especially as you go through the second half of the track, so pretty much from the hairpin and on. And on the main straight, Substream can be useful, but it's a little bit of a risk, especially in the lower lobbies, because we're in GT3 cars, so these cars are already pretty fast. So Substream, I'll say it's more of an optional thing in the lower rated lobbies, but in the higher rated lobbies, Substream can be useful. So whether you want to use the Supreme for qualifying or not is going to be up to you. It does have its risk. You can potentially run into someone and slow yourself down. So as we're about to start our first qualifying lap in a moment, 
bring yourself all the way to the left so you can have a bit more space to build up a bit more speed. So as you see right now, I'm actually qualifying by myself right now because I'm not too comfortable with substream qualifying with these kind of cars. So we're just going to be nice and careful through our first couple of turns and eventually we're going to skip on over towards the end of our first qualifying lap and we're going to bring ourselves all the way to the right since that does mean that we'll have a shorter distance to the finish line and we have just enough time just over 30 seconds from the first countdown to start a new qualifying lap so you'll have two chances to try to get the best qualifying time possible just try to make sure that your first one is the one that counts the most and the tower isn't too bad so you don't really have to do the whole jump out and jump back in strategy Either way, if you were to try to do that, you wouldn't have enough time to do another qualifying lap. So you pretty much want to do two qualifying laps in one stint, which is pretty much what a lot of us are going to be doing anyway. So once again, two chances to try to get a good qualifying time. So make sure that you make those chances count. And before I go on, I would like to apologize for the late upload as I've actually had to remake this part of the guide due to a couple of issues and some new findings. But anyways, so we're doing 16 laps at Suzuka Circuit with the Group 3 cars. Fuel is a times 3, so fuel is an issue. And the tower is a times 5, which means that tower is also an issue as well. Also, before I go on, do be careful on your first lap. Whichever tires you're on, be careful, drive a little easier as your tires are going to be cold and it's going to be easy to get caught off guard. So as you're about to see right now, I got caught off guard. The car in second place got caught off guard because we were on cold tires. We didn't take that into account. So we used our usual braking point and we ended up going off track. So brake a little earlier, just be nice and careful throughout your first lap. And this applies for all tire compounds. So just be a little careful so you don't ruin your race on the very first lap. But anyways, all three tire compounds are available to use in this race and all three tire compounds are also required to be used in this race. So you have to use all three tire compounds, the racing soft, medium and hard tires. If you miss even one of the tire requirements, you will get a one minute penalty that gets applied at the end of the race. So make sure use the racing soft, medium, and hard tires throughout your race. Now this means that you will be doing a two-stop for this race and the two-stop is going to be the way to go for this race. The only question is, which tires do you start on? And that's going to depend on where you're starting. So if you're starting in the very front of the pack, you can easily start on the racing soft tires. If you're starting towards the middle of the pack, start on the racing medium or hard tires. And if you're starting in the very back, so from 10th place and on, start on the racing hard tires. So the further down the pack you are starting on, then the more likely you want to start on the racing medium or hard tires. Get the solar tire compounds out of the way if you're starting in the back and eventually make your way towards the faster tire compounds. And if you're starting in the front, then obviously you want to start on the fastest tire compound, try to get away from everyone else, and then gradually bring yourself towards the racing medium and hard tires. But this does mean that things will get a little interesting because people will be trying different tire strategies. So not everyone's going to be going soft, medium, hard. Some people might be going medium, soft, hard, or medium, hard, soft. And then the same thing for those on the racing hard tires, they might go hard, medium, soft, or hard, soft, medium. There's going to be a bunch of different kind of strategies that people will be using. So that is something that you do want to be aware of. So let's say you're on the racing soft tires and you're approaching someone that is going noticeably slower, then that probably means that they're on the racing medium or hard tires. So at that point, you will want to try to get around them as soon as you can so you don't lose too much time and don't get held up by them. In terms of how long you want to be on each tire compound, it's going to be a little straightforward. So for both the racing soft and medium tires, 
you want to be on them for 7 to 8 laps. So you'll be spending about half of the race on each of those two tire compounds. The tire compound that you want to spend the longer time on is going to depend on you, your car, and your driving style. So if you're not that great with tire wear, then you'll want to spend 8 laps on the racing medium tires. But if you're pretty good on the tire wear, then you'll want to spend 8 laps on the racing soft tires. Either way, you want to make sure that your racing hard stint only lasts one lap because that is obviously the slowest tire compound. You're around two seconds per lap slower on the racing hard tires, so you want to spend the least amount of time with them, in which in this case, you only want to spend one lap on those tires. Now, when it comes to the fuel, fuel is an issue and most cars if they're going flat out, should be able to last around 10 to 13 laps in terms of fuel. And this is going to make things a little weird because you're going to basically want to refuel whenever you're starting your second long stint. So for example, if you're doing soft, medium, hard, you want to pit on your first pit stop because if you try to do your second stint, which is the medium stint in this case, without refueling, you're not going to make it. However, you can change up your strategy. So let's say you're still wanting to start on the soft stint. You can actually move the racing hard stint to the middle because once again, you're only doing one lap. So you'll see right now because I'm going to try this out. So let's go into the pit stops at the end of lap eight. We're going from the racing soft tires to the racing hard tires. So we're only going to do one lap on it. And as you see right now, we do have to refuel, but because we're only going to be doing one lap on the racing hard tires, we're just going to wait until we come back to the pit stop in a couple minutes. So end of lap nine, we completed our lap on the racing hard tires, got the tire compound done. So let's go ahead and pit again and go on over to the racing medium tires. So this will complete all three tire requirements. So we'll be doing the rest of the race on the racing medium tires. And in this clip or in this race, I was going flat out. So I do have to refuel. So because I'm starting my second long stint now, I do have to refuel. And I'm going to go ahead and refuel a little bit just past the diamond just to make sure I have enough fuel to be able to finish the race. So once again, whenever you're about to start your second long stint, that is when you want to refuel. Now, the question that someone may wonder is, is it faster to fuel save just enough to not have to refuel or is it faster to go flat out and take the refueling at some point? And in the testing that I did, Going flat out in the Nissan GTR was a little bit faster than doing the fuel saving, but I do want to note that when I was going flat out, I did make a couple of mistakes. So that could be uh, what made the difference a bit smaller than usual. But pretty much you're going to want to be going flat out. And I think most people will find themselves going faster overall going flat out instead of fuel saving. So if you find yourself alone, then that's when you want to be going flat out. So if there's no one in front of you, no one behind you, you're pretty much all alone, go flat out. And if you happen to be behind someone within their three quarters of a second gap, so you're in their slipstream, you're both on the same tires and you're both going at around the same pace, then do a little bit of fuel saving by staying in the slipstream and doing a bit of short shifting. That way you can save a little bit of fuel along the way. You're getting a free tow from the car ahead of you. And when you have to refuel, if you haven't already, then you'll have a little bit less time refueling. And you can also adjust the fuel mapping on the bottom right corner of the screen, but for the most part, you're not really going to want to touch that. You're only going to want to be on that screen just to see how much fuel you have. And in this clip, I, I was actually going for the zero refueling strategy. It is possible to make it work, but you are going to be cutting it very close, especially if you're not being aided by any of the slipstreams. So 
take advantage of the Supreme if you are trying to feel safe. And yeah, finishing at 0% feel, so that was actually pretty close. But anyways, let's take a quick look at the cars. So I was only able to get a good test done on the Nissan GTR and the Toyota Supra. So looking at the Nissan GTR, this is looking like it'll be the go-to car for this Nations Cup race. And well, while this car is pretty twitchy on time trial, it is a bit easier to use on the race since there is the tire wear and the fuel added in, so the car becomes a bit more stable. This car is stupidly fast here at Suzuka, especially when you're on the racing soft tires. So on the racing soft tires, it shines brightly. On the racing medium tires, it's all right. And on the racing hard tires, you want to be a little careful. So the best way to be careful with this car is just to do a lot of throttle control. So when you're going through some of these turns like the hairpin or just any lower speed corners, you just want to be nice and easy on the throttle so you don't generate too much wheel spin. Also for this car, bring the brake balance all the way to the back of the car because this car is a bit of a boat, especially as you go through the S's. The front tires wear out a bit faster than the rear, so that is another reason why you want to bring the brake balance all the way towards the rear of the car. This car is also pretty decent on the fuel, so if you do decide to go for the no refuel strat, then you can pretty much just shift at around 50 to 75% all the way through all 16 laps and you don't have to refuel. But if you go flat out, then this car does become a missile. It, get, it goes really fast. So with the zero refuel strategy, so this was where I was fuel saving. I got a 32 minutes and 26 seconds. But with me going all out, pushing the car to its limits and refueling at some point, I was able to get a 32 minutes and 24 seconds. Now let's take a look at the Toyota Supra. So this car interestingly is one of the top cars for the North America ranking board on the time trial. So on time trial, this car is actually pretty good. I was able to get, I think it was like a 56.0 with the Supra, but in the race, it, it feels all right. I don't think it's the best car to use. Um, one of my problems with it was that it felt a little too unnecessary, especially with the fuel and the tower added in. The other problem is that the tower isn't exactly the greatest. It's a bit worse than the Nissan GTR. So once those tires start to wear out, then this car starts to become a little sketchy to use. And well, this isn't a bad thing, but I just want to note that with this car, you do need to shift when the shift bar on the bottom of the screen reaches the gear number because if you rev it any more past that, then you're only losing power. So shift when the shift bar reaches the gear number. But anyways, this car, it's also not exactly the easiest to feel safe with. So you do need to be under someone's slipstream to try to take advantage of a bit more short shifting to feel safe. So with this car, yeah, you're going to be forced to feel safe and pretty much in a way go all out. So in a bit, I'll be refueling. But other than that, this car, it's not exactly the best car to use in my personal opinion. I ended up being a bit slower than the Nissan GTR. I ended up getting a 32 minutes and 30 seconds. So not exactly the fastest time that I got for this combination. And... Yeah, it's good on the first couple of laps, but after that, once the tower starts to kick in, it becomes a bit of a hassle to use. So as of right now, it's looking like the Nissan GTR is looking like it'll be the go-to car for the race. But anyways, let's take a quick look at places to overtake and the penalty serving zone. So the main street, especially with the use of Slipstream, will make this part a pretty good place to get the overtake done and try to get the inside line so you can hopefully force the outside car to back out and after that this is pretty much a single file line and I do want to note 
that because there will be a lot of different strategies being used for this race, um, you might have to overtake some people on the slower tire compound at some really weird places, so do be aware of that. And if someone is on a faster tire compound than you and you're on a slower tire compound, just let them through. It's not worth fighting it out. So this place, yeah, not exactly the best place to get the overtake done. You want to wait it out until we reach this part. So just after Degener 2, the last turn we just went through, and the hairpin, right, which is right here, this is another place where it is possible to get the overtake done, but it is a bit more situational. And for the second half of the track, it's pretty much going to be full of potential places to get the overtake done. So it is easy to get a pass done, especially with the help of Substream. Just make sure you get the inside line if you do want to go for a pass. So the smaller back straight we just went through, one place to get the overtake done. This longer back straight, another place to get the overtake done. But try to get the pass done before you enter this turn, the 130R. Don't go battling it out through here. You can hopefully just wait it out and then you can try to also go for an overtake right here into the chicane. The only exception for battling out at 130R is if it's the very final lap. But other than that, go in a single file line and save yourself a bit of time and sanity. And if you didn't spot the penalty serving zone, it is hanging out right here, not too far from Spoon before 130R. So that is the only penalty serving zone. So try not to get a penalty because you will lose quite a bit of time if you do have to serve it. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this guide. Right now it's looking like the Nissan GTR is the go-to car for this race. And make sure you use all three tire compounds. Do a little bit of fuel saving if possible and make sure to refuel. And that is pretty much it for this guide. And again, apologies for putting out this video so late as I had a couple of issues while making this video and had to remake part of it. But that's all for me. I'm going to sign off now. So this is Mr. MCA wishing you a good race and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.